Hi everyone, so in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to do Sarima identification in R using R Studio. So remember, Sarima models are basically a couple of Arima models uh, intertwined using this period M. So we have a couple of the of coefficients, so one is related to the regular part, also called non-seasonal part, and one related to the seasonal part. Okay, for instance, Arima 111, Remember, that means that we have to take the derivative, the regular derivative, the seasonal derivative, and also include our regressive part for both the seasonal and the regular part, which are these two, and the moving average part, which are these two here. Okay? So the question that I have in mind is this one. So how can we identify a good basic model? So I'm going to show you a kind of algorithmic approach to this. So first we are going to do the exploratory part. So we're going to plot the series and search for possible outliers. We're going to stabilize the variance by transforming, typically using box cog, so the logarithm or the logarithm in base 10 if we are talking about money and so on and so forth. And then we are going to analyze stationarity. So we are going to play with different levels of autocorrelation and partial autocorrelation function in order to see if we can simplify a little bit the signal. In order to, do, to obtain this stationarity, we are going to check if we need differencing both for the regular and for the seasonal part. So this is going to be the first step, okay, the phase one. In phase two, we are going to identify different models. So let again, we are going to check our correlation function and partial correlation function for this differentiated series. And then we are going to play a little bit until we have some residuals that make sense, which are purely noise. So basically that means that we have captured all the information on the model. Now we are going to check if those coefficients are significant, otherwise we are going to go back and try to simplify a little bit. And then we are going to analyze the final model residuals. So we can use that for checking out layers, not necessarily to remove them, but just trying to understand the data. Test for correlations, and we can use the link box text, but I think visually is better than that. And sometimes to plot the histogram to see if we have this, if the residuals are more or less normal. And finally, we are going to compare different models in case of doubt. So we, if we are using our ARIMA or we have some doubts about including different levels of PQ, capital P and capital Q, and we are going to compare them using the Akai information criterion. Okay, these nine steps are not easy to remember, so I'm going to use this as a kind of template, and I'm going to use a data set which is related to electricity demand. So let's load the library forecast. And then let's take the data, have this in buffer. So you can download the, the whole script, but also the data set is this elect demand in my GitHub account. Okay, I'm going to create a time series. So I'm going to use this data. And I'm going to say that the first data point it starts at 1975. Uh, let me take a look at, yeah, we have one variable, which is called X. So this is going to be Y dollar X, 1975. And this is monthly data. So frequency equals 12. Okay, now let's use DGT as display in order to plot the data. I have a snippet for that. Okay, so that, that, that's because that's why it was so fast. Okay, and a couple of things here. So you can see that we have this growing trend. So for sure, we're going to take the regular differencing. You can see that periodicity is clear here. So we have these peaks at 12, 14, and 36, and so on. So these are multiples of 12, so this is clearly related to seasonality. We also see this bar here, so probably the moving average part is going to be relevant in this model. So we have to play a little bit with the data, okay? Now, you can see that the variance is almost constant, so you can see that the difference between the minimum and the maximum here is almost constant, so you don't see any kind of heterochidasticity, so probably the box cox transformation is not required. But anyway, let's try to check that, so box cox lambda, to my variable y, and you can see that this is pretty close to one, meaning that we one is a perfect linear transformation, and in this case that means that we don't do anything to the data, so we don't need to transform the data. Imagine that we have something like 0.21, in that case a logarithm probably is going to work nice, okay? So, so this kind uh, fulfills the first two points, so we have plotted the series, and we don't see any outlier in the series, and now we we are not doing this box cox transformation. Okay, now let's analyze the stationarity. As I was saying, probably we have to do something with the trend. So let's start uh, there. So let me create a variable. First, let's try to see what happens with the, the seasonal derivative. So let's call a variable called S difference, which is basically the difference of the variable Y taking a lag equals 12, okay? By default, 
this is the first derivative, but you can also include higher derivatives if you include the parameter differences. So basically, including this parameter and removing it is, is almost going to do the same. I'm going to leave it here so you can remember the syntax, but of course this is the default value. Okay, so here we go. Let's plot this variable as stiff and see what happens. Okay, this is interesting. We still see this the trend, but we have kind of lost the periodicity except here. Okay, but this is a single bar, so we don't see any pattern repeated there. So again, this is probably related to the moving average part of the seasonal part of the Sarima model, but you, we don't see any periodic pattern here. So this is good, um, but we still see this trend. And this trend, remember, that was related to the trend of the data. So let's try to remove the trend So and compare. So instead of doing uh, this derivative on top of that, let's copy this parameter but we are going to do a regular derivative. So remember, lag by default is equals one and difference is equals one. So basically this is just a classical derivative, okay? And now let's copy this and change the R. And here we go. So instead of having performed the seasonal derivative, we perform the regular derivative. You can see something interesting. So we remove, let's, let me go back to the beginning. So uh, we, we wanted to remove this kind of linear trend and we have done that. But now this is more apparent than before that we have to do something with seasonality. So you can see that when we perform the regular, the, so, sorry, the seasonal derivative, we saw this trend that we wanted to remove. And now that we have performed the regular derivative, we see this periodic pattern, which is repeated at 12, 14, and so on and so forth. Actually, you have something at, in the middle of, of the term, which is actually makes a lot of sense because if you go back to the data, you can see that the peaks are repeated, but also there is a negative correlation between the peak and the valley, which is, related to the fact that the years, every six months, you are, you are in a different period of the year, okay? And this is, again, related to the fact that we go from negative to positive and so on and so forth. So again, now this simple inspection has given us a lot of information because now we see that clearly we have to remove the seasonal derivative, the seasonal trend, and we have to remove the regular trend, okay? So now we're going to do both things. And we're going to define a new variable, let's call it rdiff dot sdiff and we're going to do the order doesn't matter remember that the derivative is a commutative operator so first let's take okay this means again remember that i'm not using the default parameter so first take this seasonal derivative and then the regular one but as i was saying this is exactly the same if we reverse the commands okay and now let's plot this ggts display y r diff s diff and here we go and this looks lovely you can see that now we have almost everything is noise we have something i know missing is still there there is some lag almost at 12 there but basically everything is noise except these bars at zero and remember a bar here was related to to the auto regressive part and a bar here was related to the moving average part so this model probably is going the best the best model probably is going to be one coming from this part and one taking from from the lag so one one zero or one 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 uh, zero one one or something like that so i'm going to see to check that in the next video but now you can see that you have a lot of information and remember just by taking derivatives we have transformed this very complex time series into this time series which is pretty much like noise with some regressions and some correlations here and there.